In the beginning, we wanted to do a, a space, and we were looking at these optical illusions and trying to make something fun for the viewer. Uh, we ended up to see this uh, video from the 70s, and it really inspired us. It was about holograms, and we were thinking, can we make this hologram more artistic? Because usually holograms are of an object, and we wanted to make it of a surface. So this was a great challenge for us. The Engros project started as generating a multidisciplinary platform for the students under the textile design uh, department and fashion to be able to collaborate with students from the Department of Engineering, mainly mechanical engineering. And um, the main aim of the project was to allow the students to get exposed beyond the platform and the boundaries of their own um, field. I had the possibility to try and work with new, extremely interesting things. And uh, this project allowed me to apply my knowledge in physics, in practice, and in, uh, in a beautiful uh, visual and artistic context. I come from textile design background, and it's really um, different, like this project that we did, like the Engars project is different. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, mixing languages or disciplines and different fields with that where you can create something what haven't been done before and we managed to create something really unique. Yeah, I think it was really unique that we went to these optic labs uh, to develop all these films and everything. I think the biggest accomplishment of the course or the aim of the course was to generate a community and a network for the students. Um, Alto University's aim in general is to create these multidisciplinary and collaborative platforms and to flourish them. And NGOS it was one of the pilot projects to allow the students to have access and to be able to communicate with other fields, uh, students from other fields, and to get exposed to um, what happens in the other fields. In the end, we aim to project a three-dimensional surface onto a two-dimensional plane through a hologram. And if you have a holographic plate and you um, direct the laser through it, you get a three-dimensional projection on the other side. And this was the phenomena that really interests us. So a hologram in itself, you expose it a bit like you would expose a normal analog negative or analog film only that you expose it with a laser light. So you have two laser beams, one that goes straight onto the holographic plate and the other one that's reflected from the object itself, or in our case, the surface. The tricky part is that both of these light beams need to hit the glass plate on the exactly the same like intensity. And then you just expose the glass plate like you would expose a normal analog film and you use a similar development process. You develop it and then you bleach it. And in the end, you will get a hologram as you know it, for example, from a postcard. And if you project through it with a laser, you get the three-dimensional projection. And the really interesting thing about it is that even in a physical sense, you have a representation of a real three-dimensional uh, surroundings on the plate. And it's not merely an, like visual illusion of a third dimension. Um, why, why do they help you? This is what we do, normal people help each other. <laughs> That's why I helped you, of course. Yeah. Especially, and if, if you were from some other university, but you are from our university, our students, of course, we help our students. It's very common in holography that you use an object or a figurine. And uh, we wanted to bring in the textile in this and, and have a look into the textile structure. So uh, with this three-dimensional hologram, you could feel like you were in, inside the fabric somehow and really see how the fabric, wh how it's made. And that was uh, something that we wanted to bring in. Uh, what did I learn? Actually, my <clears throat> another motivation for me was that I, um, that I wanted to see the, the result of an experiment with you. So in the beginning I doubted that you will get any good result because you don't have any experience in optics and the problem that you wanted to solve is quite challenging. So um, I gave about 90% that you will fail, but now you succeeded. So what did I learn? I learned that, I learned that uh, 
that students are, must be separated from the rest people on the planet. They are super gifted, they can do everything. <laughs> this is what I learned. <clears throat> I learned that uh, this kind of more abstract approach often gives more human-centric results. And the uh, input to do something, you need to state a problem before find a solution. Hmm. I myself come from like quite artistic backgrounds and I think I've learned a lot like from engineer thinking as well and how to solve problems in a different methods mm. and I think it's really like important to and also like stepping out of your comfort zone if I had been in this project alone I hadn't done it like this <laughs>